Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our voice. Let your ears be attentive to our call. If you, O Lord, should mark inequities, Lord, who could stand? But there is a forgiveness for you, too, so that he may be in grace. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. We wait for the Lord, we hope in his word. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O people of God, O the Lord, for the Lord is there to stand.
Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attended to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, have directed his sins, O Lord, who can stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his words I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for, the, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Let's live our lives in this truth. 
and saw all inclusive grace and an open ended invitation. This is where we want to go, who we want to be together. Maybe we, we, we find ourselves, maybe we find ourselves in a desk right now. And, and, and if you're not feeling that way, I know with all the medical things we're going, going on, I, I'm feeling a little bit that way. If, if you're, you're not there right now personally, I bet you have friends or neighbors or, or, or family who are feeling like they're, they're, they're down in that abyss. So, so before we go back to the work of hope, let, let, let's start with, with our human condition. It, it was at the bottom of such an abyss that the, the writer of Psalm 130 fancied himself. And he was just about to lose all hope of, of ever seeing the light of day. It's quite likely that the hole in which we, we find ourselves is it, 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 a figurative one. But, but nonetheless real. Even in the face of rescue, we, we instinctively panic like, like a drowning victim trying to climb over the, the lifeguard, <laughs> trying to pull him out of the water. We tend to escalate rather than de-escalate, defuse, calm down, or lighten up. We, we were experts at, at taking a bad situation and just make it worse. When we try to rationalize this behavior uh, when we're faced with, with, with failure. Just, just a couple of examples. There's all kinds of ways we do this. Uh, oh, perhaps if I raise my voice and start shouting, she'll understand. Or for all kinds of addictive behavior. Let, let me just stay in Vegas for one more night and I can win it back. <laughs> really, I, I can and I will. I have a system. The most pertinent advice for people in situations like this has been, well, it's been attributed to Will Rogers, Bill Clinton, Cowboys, Warren Buffett, Pat Robinson, all of whom knew of what they spoke. Except when you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you need to do is stop digging. We have to turn away from our bent to destructive behavior, our, our unwillingness to, to change, and instead recognize our failing and, and put our trust that God can dig us out of what we can't dig ourselves out of. No matter how far we try. The, the author of today's psalm reading, well, is in a hole. Out of the depths I, I cry to you, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, hear my cry. Obviously, the scene is of a person in a pit from which no escape is possible. From the bottom of this pit, he's now hollering for help. Lord, hear my voice. Well, first we need to stop digging and then cry for help. What well, doesn't seem obvious, but sometimes it just doesn't sink in. We might be, you know, just too much of this culture of independence, that our rugged, individualism. It's seen as a virtue and crying in any way, shape, or form, well, as bad, as well tolerated as a preteen whining for more money and their allowance. Asking for help might well maybe will say it's okay if it's the government we're, we're hitting on. But polite, intelligent, wise persons with, with strong emotional IQs, well, we don't need to ask 
people for help, especially financial help, we even hesitate to ask for directions. God forbid we, we should think of asking for more, but the Bible teaches us, you know, it's not only okay to ask God for help, but, but it's almost required if we hope to dig ourselves out of holes instead of digging ourselves into We may not, really don't know the full extent of, of, of the author's duress, but surely it was considerable. You know, we, we say that, you know, hitting rock bottom must be where he was at. It, it has a tone of a person who's lost everything in life. It, it has a sound of a parent suddenly bereft of a, of a child. It, it feels like the anguish of someone whose life and reputation has been destroyed and now feels like well, they're just nowhere to turn. This is a person at the crossroads. Have you ever been there? Maybe, maybe not quite that deep. Have you been standing alone at an intersection in the middle of nowhere, realizing that there are four big choices that you face are just reduced to? Either I end it all now and forever, or I cry out for the depths of despair to God. I die, or I ask for help. No other. But one would hope that we've never been quite so deep, that never hit quite so far on the bottom to such a profound and dark place. But, but many people have. And this is where the song writer is at, in the depths. And what's worse, it is not only in the pit of despair, but it's one of his own making. How often has this happened in our lives? It's bad enough to be in an extreme situation, and worse is when the extremity is self-inflicted. The psalmist readily admits the destiny and borderline hypocrisy. He wants help from the very source which he has sinned against. If you, O oh Lord, should mark my iniquities, Lord, who can stand? He doesn't identify his mistakes. But if we were to take a, 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 a candid inventory of our own choices, decisions, behaviors, ill-chosen words that have landed us in hot water, any of us can say, hey, I, I haven't made any errors. I, I, I'd rather not look at how long my list is. It's big. Would you like God to keep track of, of, of all your sins and create a good book, jump them down, do <coughs> each one? Well, no, we wouldn't like it. I mean, we don't even like it when our spouse or our children remind us of our shortcomings and inconsistencies. <laughs> How fun is it, is it to live with somebody who reminds you of all of your mistakes, or who wrote you up for any inappropriate behavior? Yet, even when staring at the ceiling, at dark, Zero thirty. Well, cursing our, our stubborn, irascible behavior. When we know, we know the one thing, the one thing we need to do. I need to ask God to save me for myself. 
we know that God alone can lift us out of the depths. How do we know this? Because we agree with the psalmist. There is forgiveness with you. <clears throat> and now, now we get back to the word of the Lord. Forgiveness. What a sweet word. There is repairing and healing all in forgiveness. We, we know this from experience, don't we? Why is God like? Christ like? To offer forgiveness when we've been wronged. C.S. Lewis noted that to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. There is perhaps no greater attribute of God's essential nature than God's willingness, no, even eagerness to forgive the repentant and broken heart. Perhaps that's why Martin Luther called it Psalm 130 and, and all the penitential psalms, he called them the Pauline psalms because of their emphasis on faith and forgiveness. This amazing God is the one who will forgive all our iniquities. So if you're dyslexic, you can just take, you know, Psalm 103 instead of 130 and, and, and say, for as far as the east is from the west, so far removes your transgressions Human beings, oh, and we take so much longer than God to forgive. And, and perhaps some will, will never forgive and forget. But after exhausting all avenues of redress, we have to leave it and to be all the more thankful for the amazing grace God extends us in the saving works of Jesus. So the writer and equal, with full knowledge of his own capability, obeys the laws of forgiveness and grace as we should. He asks for help. Having stopped digging, having sent out the cry for help, one must wait for hope. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. Sounds simple enough, but isn't it hard to wait? It's incredibly hard to wait. But if you cannot wait, you cannot hope. For one is inexplicably tied to the other. Only those who wait upon the Lord can hope in the Lord. Okay, so how do we do it? We wait by staying in the now. Going over past problems. Reliving old mistakes or getting a case of the shoulda, woulda, couldas, it, it's really no help whatsoever. Rather, we focus on the task at hand, next steps uh, in, in positive actions. In a whole, there is no way to go except up. There is nothing. That's not going to happen without waiting with a clear mind and hearts. That's not even thinking about living in the future or worrying about what's coming up. Push aside that human tendency to just kick yourself. 
we wait with confidence in the one on whom we have called for help. We, we, we rang up God. We must wait and let God answer. We've reached out to the creator of the universe. We must let God do what God does. Oh, and on God's schedule, not ours. We're so impatient. We wait with courage. This is the advice of the psalmist. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. John, John Wayne would reportedly said, you know, courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. Our metaphor might work better with, with, with maybe a climbing reference, right? We're talking about being down in a hole. Courage is being scared to death, but scrapping on the harness and, and snapping on a carabiner and, and having faith that the rope won't break. We wait with contentment. We, we don't wait as though we're standing in, in front of the elevator uh, pushing that button over and over again. Or, or, or you get in the elevator and, and the doors aren't closing fast enough for you. <laughs> like it's going to make any difference. The elevator will come when it comes. And we, we learn to practice peace. We, we learn to be content with God's timing. As the Apostle Paul wrote to the Romans, but if we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. That's where we need to grow, isn't it? Patience. Corey Timmonboom once wrote, there is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. When God's forgiving love reaches down to the depth of our soul, it lifts us up to a new place, a, a fresh start, and that's when we realize we're forgiven. We indeed have a future. This is what the psalmist wanted. Isn't it what we all want? Forgiveness for the future. It's what God gives us. That's our good news.